this is John Selway for dubspot.com. In this tutorial, part of a series covering techno fundamentals, we'll start off with a basic beat and then use operator to create a bass sound. Starting with a deep rolling sub that builds into more than just a bass line, using FM synthesis to add complexity, along with some audio effects to further shape the sound. To get everyone started, I've made an ALP file which you can download from Dubspot, which includes a custom drum rack with a few of my own sounds. So let's take a look at what we have on the Selway synth drum track here. There is a MIDI clip already pre-programmed with a four on the floor quarter note kick drum pattern. Let's take a quick listen to that. Now I'm just gonna add a little something to give it some more bounce and some more energy. Let's do the uh, typical upbeat house and techno hi-hat pattern, which would be the eighth notes in between the quarter notes. There we go. And that's enough for now. This is mostly about the bass. So let's take a look at the more than a baseline track. I will stop the clip just for a moment. Now let's see what we have. There's an operator. It's a default operator on the more than a baseline track. You can see the oscillator A section here. The level is all the way up at zero. And uh, also by default, it is generating a sine wave. That's typical of FM synthesis to begin with sine waves. Uh, before we start making our bass line, let's uh, change a couple of things quickly here. I'm going to go to my global shell here on the lower right, and where it says voices, select that and change it to 1. Then I'm going to go to the, the pitch shell, and where that G is, where it says glide, we want to turn that on. And what that's going to do is when the notes overlap, when the MIDI notes overlap in our clip, you will hear the the pitch bend into each other, the notes bend into each other. So let's double click on an empty cell on the more than a baseline track. Uh, we have our clip view now, and we want to add in some notes in the right range for a bass or for a sub bass, and that's going to be on the low side. Let's go and scroll down to where our piano bar shows us uh, notes between C0 and C1. That octave is a pretty good place to start. And my MIDI editor preview button is on, and so when I click on a note, we can hear the operator playing that sine wave at a nice low frequency for us. Now I'm going to start the beat and then start writing a bass line just with one note, just, just like I would write a, a, a drum pattern. I'm not worried about melody or anything, I'm just going to try to create a rhythm that goes with the beat and has a kind of effect I want, which is kind of a continuous rolling feel. So let's get the beat going and our baseline, our empty baseline clip. And picking a note, I'm going to start. It's kind of arbitrary. If it sounds good to you, it's probably all right. Well, it's a little low getting down by C0. So let's stick up on the top half of the octave, closer to C1. I'm going to start with A sharp zero and then just drawing some notes. I'm double clicking. And I want to pick, I kind of want to pick the space in between the kick drums. That sounds good. I'm going to keep that going. I'm going to do that twice for the full. So I have that, that shorter note and that longer note, and they're kind of repeating for the first and the second half of that bar. So that's the kind of feel I'm going for, this kind of continuous roll while there's still space for those kick drums to come through. And now what I'm going to do is add some other notes and have that bend like we were talking about with the glide. I'm going to put lower notes that overlap with the higher note that I have. So they'll start after and then play together. You can hear kind of bending down and it changes the bounce or the feel of that groove. Let's put them in on the other ones too. That sounds good to me. It's got a little more depth to it now with that lower note and it's got that bending kind of bounce to it. Turn it up a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is that glide effect is also good for high, much higher notes. If we take kind of the notes out of the bass range, let's see, I'm just going to go up like a whole nother octave here and throw one in there. So 
I put in a, another A sharp. That's uh, an octave above the A sharp that I started with. All right, so now we've got a, a bass line, but there's also kind of like a higher note in there. It almost sounds like an extra part happening. All right, let's take a look at the operator and we wanna start making this into more of a complex sound. What I'm gonna do is go to oscillator B and add, sort of add that in. It's gonna start modulating A and adding more mids and highs to the sound. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I bring it in is I'm gonna change the tuning, the course tuning from one to two and that's gonna make that oscillator play at an octave higher than oscillator A. And the next thing I'm gonna do is change the envelope shape. So I'm going to bring the sustain down and now I've got a percussive envelope where the attack is instant and then there's a short decay so the, decay, so the, the sound fades away very quickly. Now let's play our bass line again and hear what happens as I bring the level of oscillator B up. So it sounds like I'm adding another layer to it, but really it's just, it's modulating A, it's changing the shape of A and adding in higher frequencies. And because it's got that percussive envelope shape, it's adding that kind of bouncy mid-range attack to the sound. Yet we still have that kind of low, bendy sub underneath it happening in between. If I go all the way up, this is actually reminding me of uh, certain stuff. Uh, there's some 90s techno by Green Velvet that, where he used a lot of these kind of modulated FM sounds. So sort of similar to that style. Also, if I change the envelope again, if I make the attack longer, it's going to have a different effect on A. And it's going to fade in those higher frequencies and, and kind of longer. And now we can hear that higher note real clear. Let's go back. All right, now let's add in another oscillator. This time I'm going to change the waveform from sine to uh, sine 4 bit, which is actually a sign but with bit reduction on it so it has some digital distortion and, and ultra high frequencies in it and that's going to give us a different kind of a tone than a regular sine wave. Um, I'm also going to fine tune, adjust the fine tune a little bit and it's going to make a, a subtle modulation and give that sound a slight spin. So let's bring that level up as we uh, listen to our groove again. Actually I'll bring B down first so a little more subtle. Now let's bring up C in here, uh, what that does to the sound. It's got kind of a extra buzz to it now. A little more brightness that we can bring in. Bring up B again. All right, so that's a really solid sound now. We can go from the sub to a brighter, more energetic thing just by adding in those other uh, oscillators. Now, let's just quickly add a couple of effects to kind of thicken up and, and fatten up the sound. I'm going to throw a saturator after the op operator, and what that's going to do is it's going to add distortion, but I'm just going to use a little bit just to fill out the sound. It's going to add some more mids and make, make the sound kind of richer and thicker. Let's hear what that does when I increase the gain on the saturator. So in addition to being a little bit louder, it's also adding in some, some frequencies and making it fuller. I'm actually gonna bring down the volume of that a little bit. I can do it simply by bringing the output level of the saturator down a little. Okay. Finally, let's throw a chorus on the end. Now, right away, if you hear it, it sounds like our bass kind of went away, right? It sounds hollow. We wanna be careful with chorus on bass. What I'm gonna do is turn the delay two off and set the high pass of delay one down to, I don't know, between 70 and 100. That's sort of where the bass ends and the low mids begin. Let's go up to 100. And then I'm gonna bring my dry, wet balance much more dry. So I've just got about like, I don't know, 20, 30% wet. And when we listen to that, 
a lot more solid and there's just a little bit of stereo effect on the higher frequencies that we'll notice more when we bring the level of uh, oscillator B up again. And it just gives it some width and some kind of panning, makes it sound wider. There you have it. We have a strong foundation to start a new track with. We've got a sound that evolved from a sub to a complex, you know, full on techno power noise. And in my next tutorial, we'll add another layer to the groove, starting again with a simple sound and building it with basic synthesis techniques and effects into something more. And we'll use real time control and automation of all the parameters to shape the sounds over time and using that kind of sonic evolution to give us ideas and direction for building up an arrangement. So until next time, this is John Selway for dubspot.com. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.